1030 92.1 WROI and it's time to welcome to the studios once again CEO of Woodlawn Hospital John Alley how are you sir? good morning couldn't be better you brought an entire platoon of help here I brought backup today just in case it got out of control yeah. I have backup today that happens a lot it right? happens a lot yes <laughs> you and Tom you're wild men yes uh, so what's going on at Woodlawn I know we do have uh, one thing going on with the schools but I also know we have other things too right so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and I'll kind of give you a quick update of the board report that we had yesterday, okay. and then we'll kick into the important people and uh, what they've accomplished over the past couple of years. Very good. Uh, yesterday's board meeting, we did have uh, Mary Kay from the Compassionate Care Center come in and give our annual report to the hospital. We do support them each year in helping their operations, and uh, so it's always nice to hear from her what's going on with the clinic and you know how they're treating the patients and you know it's we do see an advantage to the hospital uh, lots of times in the past those folks prior to the clinic would let a medical condition get out of control before they would come see us in the ER with the clinic now those who qualify can get in there get a lot of that preventative medicine and we're kind of stopping some of the serious illnesses and diseases before they get started so they serve a very good purpose in the community and you know if you're uninsured or underinsured check with them see if they can help you because it's a no cost to the patient so they look for donations and subsidies to keep that clinic open so it uh, serves a really good purpose in the community next after that then we had the foundation come out and do a presentation they're wanting to we have what we call the island which is an area out in front of the hospital around the our pond okay, they yeah. kind of identified some trees out there that one aren't really natural they've been transplanted in that area they're either dead or dying so they've identified they want to take those out and replant it with other oak hardy trees that's more uh, natural for that area and then as they move forward as a fundraiser for the foundation then they're going to take and you can be able to you know buy the tree so to speak in name of a of a you know, family member or whatever you want to do so we can have some memorial trees out there and it's going to really make that look a lot nicer out there on the island get some of the scrub brush out of there put some nice trees in and they were just wanting to make sure it was okay with the hospital board before they proceeded with that so they you know did say yes they're fine with that and the hospital board uh, agreed to help with about 50 percent of the cost to remove some of the old trees that's out there so uh, that project hopefully starting in the next six to eight weeks get some of the the trees out and then we'll replant what we've taken out with some uh, hardy trees natural to this area to really help beautify that island area that also helps a lot to keep bug infestations and things like this down yeah you know, and trees they draw all kinds of problems. we go through a lot of, of effort to make sure that we maintain that safe area out there make you know with the trees and the dead limbs and stuff and these are some trees that you know need to come out they, they're starting to die or they've already died so it's going to make it real nice they'll come in they'll cut the trees down use a stump removal tool take the stump out and then we're going to replant everything that we took out so you know for you folks who are worried about us taking trees out we're actually going to be putting more in than we took out so we're going to try to get uh, you know some of the more shade back out in the island area excellent we got past that uh, you know, we talked about our generator uh, we'd had a generator in the hospital for 37 years and it's a very important piece of tool for us and it decided one day it wanted to stop working I understand. And, uh, you know, after 37 <laughs> years, you know, you're trying to figure out parts and everything else. And the decision was made, let's go with a, a new generator, replacement one. Why put a lot of money to repair one that you don't know what the outcome is going to be? So we kind of just updated the board on that. Usually those type of purchases has to go to the board prior to us doing it. Because of the emergency nature of this one, I was able to kind of email and phone call and say, hey, can I go ahead and do with this? And they said, yes, we need to get that done. So new generators in, operational we had a rental unit in there for quite some time hopefully that'll be gone yet this week and back back to normal but uh, appreciate the board saying yeah before the meeting let's get this done now is this a uh, diesel natural gas this is a diesel generator okay. and, and why we went with a diesel rather than natural gas is we're required for our boilers to have two separate fuel sources for them so they are natural gas and diesel so we have a fairly large underground diesel tank only makes sense to already use a resource we have so we right. went with the diesel on the generator so we can you know not just let that diesel fuel set in the ground and, and go bad so uh, we try to run the boiler off of natural gas more than we do the diesel it's a little more efficient after that we actually then got into the financials which I was hoping we go a little quicker July was not the best month financially for the hospital so we didn't spend a lot of time on that but the board understands that you know our business is, is uh, we have those downtimes usually during the summer months we have two to three months 
I'm gonna say you'll pick that back up. We'll hopefully fall. start picking that back up as we move to September, October, November. December it usually falls off a little again at, at that time of year. But we had gross revenue of about 9.4 million for the month, and we had hoped had budgeted about 10.3. So, you know, we're almost a million dollars under our expectations for revenue. Our deductions from revenue was a little over six million. So that left us at what we call our operating revenue of 3.4 million and our operating expenses was 3.9 million. So we actually posted about a $470,000 loss for the month. You know, it's, we're not worried, we're concerned. You know, it probably looks like August, the month of August, but another small loss because again, July, August seems to be our two bad months. September, we're uh, anticipating again, starting picking back up. So, uh, you know, the board, never likes to see a loss but you know they understand our type of business we do have down periods and usually the summer months are those we had a lot of physicians on vacation a lot of members of the community were out of town on vacation so you know when you start taking those two out of our uh, out of the mix business does drop off and it was a fairly short meeting we we're kind of got those items covered and I think that everybody wanted to get out and enjoy the the decent weather yesterday so fairly yeah, short beautiful meeting day. beautiful day and with the price of gasoline that's probably also part of the explanation why so many people are out of town because you could afford to drive again for a while half of what you did what two three years ago. yes so yep very good then now at this point uh, I'm going to kind of turn it over to my backup I brought in just in case things got out of out of control is uh, Christina Hughes is our athletic uh, trainer out the high school and they started a project approximately two years ago to get Rochester High School certified as a safe sports school so I'm going to let her kind of give you the details it was kind of a long process but uh, they, they accomplished what they set out so Christina thank you and I appreciate the opportunity to be here this is a great award for our school and appreciate having the time to kind of talk about those things. The Safe Sports School is an award given by the National Athletic Trainers Association and it's to recognize those schools who have really made it a priority to create a safe environment for our athletes to compete in. There's um, 10 areas and kind of some sub areas that we worked through in the last two years to make sure we had all those components in place and by getting those things done we really have created the safest possible environment for our athletes to compete in. Um, I can go through some of the yeah, different might, components. You might just give them some of the things that you really had to work on to make sure that uh, we did provide and the school provides a safe spot for their athletes. Um, the different components, some of them are very small things like making sure we have a facility um, to treat our athletes in and also having a locked filing cabinet for our medical records and then some of them are much bigger. And one of the things I wanted to highlight is our annual rehearsal of our emergency plans. This is a pretty, pretty significant part because if the need ever arises, you want to make sure you have a well-rehearsed emergency plan in place. And so what we did in April, we did a walkthrough and we had people from the school, so our administrators and our school nurses, the athletic director, and we also had people from the community, so the fire and EMS and sheriff, anyone that would be involved in, in responding to a 911 call. And we brought these people all together, started in the high school, went through each of those gyms, the wrestling room, um, went through the middle school, and then we also did our off-site facilities at Blackader for soccer and Fansler for softball. And this really was a great experience because a lot of the public that aren't in the schools every day don't know if we say something like the Zebby doors or if we say the wrestling hallway. People aren't as familiar with those venues. So by actually doing a walkthrough and getting those outside people into some of those places, it's going to make the response time much easier and it's going to make the communication much clearer. So that's something we're going to do every year and that's really a big part of, of um, this program. One of the things that we discussed prior to the meeting with the superintendent was you know, this good things happen when you can get two fairly diverse organizations to agree what's the best thing to do for our student athletes, provide that safe environment. And you know, we it's it's just kind of a, a good thing when you see two organizations say, What's our goal? and both work toward that, even though we're in different industries and have different, you know, mindsets of how things we we came together from how we should treat these student athletes. They're a very important component of the school system and, and the school environment for those kids. And I think there was what, only six or seven schools in the northern half of the state that was able to achieve this. So again, a job well done by Christine and her staff and absolutely job well done by the Rochester High School folks to ensure that they have that environment. Something we've seen in the news a lot over the last couple of years is uh, concussions 
um, and how they're treated and such. Does that go into this award? Do they look at how you deal with it? Because when I was in high school, you know, shake it off, you're just dizzy, blah, put some dirt on it or something like that, you know. But now it's, we know a lot more than what we did then. And it's how we deal with a concussion or any kind of a head injury part of all this. Absolutely. One of the one of the big parts of this is coaching education. And so our coaches are trained not only in concussion management, but also heat illness. Last year they added sudden cardiac arrest. And then our football coaches get some additional training in equipment fitting. And even though the state laws and things only state that we need this for our high school coaches, we've incorporated this all the way down to our youth programs and our middle school programs. So any of the sports teams in Rochester community schools, K through 12, the coaches will have had all this training. And they know what to look for out there because that's another thing you read about in the news every once in a while is they're doing drills out on a football field when it's really hot. So they know the signs to look for for a kid when he's having problems. Yep, the coaches um, are educated that and also the parents are. They um, started about three years ago having the parents actually sign a sheet that says they've read and understood the risks of concussion and heal heat illness and sudden cardiac arrest and it gives all the signs and symptoms. So that way you just have more sets of eyes that are trained on what to look for, whether it's heat illness or concussion or anything like that. And one of the things several years ago, the hospital partnered again with the school and I think it's called an impact program where we can bring in the athletes and we get a baseline. There's a, a series of tests we put them I through. What are you talking about? So that? they have this baseline test that we keep on file. So then if they do have a concussion related injury, they need to come back in and retake that test. And it'll say, are you ready to go back yet or not? And you know, from what I understand, both coaches, parents, and even physicians are relying on that. They're saying, you know, I know you tell me you're ready to go back in and you're my star player, but you need a little more rest. Let's get you over this concussion. And uh, you know, we've had great success with that. And uh, I think it goes down to middle school now. I think we offer it that far. So you know, it's it's just a great thing to do if you know coaches get their kids in here, get that baseline, no charge, and then we keep that on file. Then if they do have that head related or concussion injury, we'll retest them, and it gives them a good indication: are they ready to go back on the field? And you're seeing even the NFL now. A lot of times you'll see you know during the football season they'll take a guy off, say, "Well, he's going to go in for his concussion testing." Same thing they're doing. They've got a baseline. They make them retake that test to say, "Are you ready and fit to go back and play again?" The, Im the impact test is a great way to provide some objective data because everything else we rely on are subjective complaints and, and an athlete can tell you they're feeling fine and they may even be able to pa pass some of the balance tests or, or visual tracking tests but that impact test really gives us objective data. There's not a way to fake your way through that and it tells us the reaction time and their sequencing time and delayed memory and things like that. And I can attest you can't fake it because I tried. Yeah. I, I actually <laughs> took the test to see if I could uh, fake the system and I couldn't. So There's a lot of people not in the astronaut program at Yes, to. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. So, uh, you know, again, congratulations to Rochester Schools and, and you know, to, to the, our therapy department for making this a commitment to make sure we have that safe school for those student athletes. And, uh, you know, our hope is that every school in the state gets to the point where they can pass this and get that accreditation. It's for the student athletes. Give them a safe environment and, you know, I know athletics is not all of their education, but it's a big component anymore, so let's right. make sure we keep it safe for them. Excellent. Again, John Alley, CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. And uh, do we have anything else we need to go over? Nope. I just wanted to say thank you to the hospital and to the high school. It's a pretty unique partnership for a town this size. There's a lot of schools in our area that don't have an athletic trainer at all, and there's a lot that maybe share one athletic trainer with three or four schools. So the commitment from the hospital and the high school to keep this contract in place to provide an on-site athletic trainer for full coverage, full practices, and there for all the games really, really is a great thing for this community. And uh, the thanks for that goes to the hospital and the high school. Excellent. You got anything else, John? I, I'm finally done. Really? Yes. <laughs> Goodness. All right. <laughs> Uh, again, Woodlawn Hospital Report. We come to you with this every month after the uh, board meeting. It was good information, folks. Thanks for having us. Thank you very kindly.